I recently watched this data fetching video by Josh and I was shocked how bad the advice was. If every single website implemented what he said to do, 50% of the entire world would no longer be able to access the internet. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about what is wrong with his advice, as well as showing what you can do instead to solve the problem he was trying to fix. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And in Joss's video, the problem he was trying to solve is when you're requesting data from a server, if the server is really slow, what do you do to let the user know? In our case, when I click this load users button, you can see our data load is almost instantaneously. As you can see, I have an API set up and I have the delay set to 10 milliseconds. So as you can see, it's a very quick data fetch. And that's because I have fast internet, I'm hardwired in and all of that. But what happens if there was a problem with the server and the server was taking longer than usual to respond because there's too many requests coming in? Let's say instead of 10 milliseconds, this actually was taking 10 seconds. So if we restart our server and I just refresh this page and I click load users, you're now going to notice it's stuck in this loading state and it's going to be stuck there for 10 seconds, which is obviously not a good user experience. I may think that your site is broken and I may leave because I'm like, what the heck, there's a problem with your site. Eventually the data gets there, but it takes a really long time. What Josh proposed that you do to solve this problem is inside of your code where you're fetching out your user information. This is pretty much a basic fetch request where we're just setting our loading state. Then we're getting our data, setting it to success. If we have an error, we set it to an error and that's all that's happening. But inside of here, we're setting a timeout. This is Josh's idea is that if your request takes too long, in our example, we're just saying two seconds. If it takes longer than two seconds, just cancel the request completely because there's probably something wrong with your server. So now you can see if I save that, refresh and click load, it's going to wait two seconds and then I'm going to get an error because this timeout ran, it canceled my request and it went into this catch block right here with an error. Now technically doing this will solve the problem that we came into where we have extra long loading states that are probably a problem with our server. But the problem that this introduces is that now if you're on a slow connection, for example, if you have really bad data connection, I'm very used to this living in Nebraska, it's like the hole for all data connection maps. But if you have really slow data connection or you just have a slow internet connection in general, you're going to hit this two second timeout and you're not going to be able to access data at all. And a large portion of the world is living on 3G or slower data. So it's always going to take them longer than two, three, four seconds to request data from the server, which means they're never going to be able to access anything because it's just airing out before the data ever gets there. Now, I love Josh's videos. I think he does a really good job. But unfortunately, in this regard, I think he kind of dropped the ball and it's perfectly OK. He was solving a problem and he solved it. He just didn't really think about some of the edge cases. So I want to show you an alternative solution that does the exact same thing of solving the problem, but doesn't ever degrade the experience for anyone else. So the easiest thing by far that we can do is instead of canceling our request here, instead we just wanna notify the user that there is some type of delay going on. So instead of canceling the request, we're gonna remove this canceling code. I'm just gonna comment it out for now. We'll comment this out and we'll comment out the section where we're adding in the signal for canceling. That's all of our cancel code removed. And instead, when the request is taking too long to get back to us, I'm gonna set a new fetch status. And this one I'm gonna to set to delayed, saying that this response is delayed compared to what we expect. It shouldn't be taking this long. And this may be two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. It's whatever your app needs. So now we can actually take that delay response, come in here, and when our fetch status is equal to delayed, we can actually render out a message to our users. So let's just render out a div that says this response is taking longer than normal. That looks pretty good. And up here, just to make sure our button is properly disabled, because we still want it to be disabled when our fetch status is equal to delayed, we're just going to add that in like this. So now I'm going to click on load users. You can see it's loading. And after a couple seconds, you can now see it says, hey, this response is taking longer than normal, but it's still processing my response in the background. And after that full 10 second delay, I will see the data show up just like you saw. And now I can click the button again or do whatever else I want. So I'm getting the best of both worlds. When I click this button and the data is taking too long to get back to me, I'm giving the user a message saying, hey, there's probably something wrong with our server. This is why it's taking longer than normal. You know, this is perfectly normal. Don't worry about it. We're still working on this. But for the slower browsers, you can see we're still getting that data back instead of just canceling out of the response completely. We can even take this a step further by actually adding in like a cancel button. So what we can do inside here, this response is taking longer than normal. It is still running in the background. If you want, you can cancel the request and retry it. Obviously, you can use whatever normal copy you want, but inside of here, I'm just gonna add a cancel button. So let's just come in here, make sure I have this fragment to close everything off, and we'll add in a button. And this button will say cancel, just like that. 
So now if I click load users, after two seconds, you will see that this cancel button will pop up and I can click on it, but I need to make it actually cancel my request. So to do that, I'm going to create my abort controller here, just like I was before. I want to pass along my signal so I can actually cancel my request, but instead of canceling it in this timeout, I instead want to cancel it down here when I click on this button. So on click, I want to run some code that's going to essentially call controller.abort. Now, in order to get this controller to abort things, I need to store it inside of a reference. So we can just say here, const controller ref is equal to use ref. And then we can say our controller ref dot current is equal to that. And here our controller ref dot current dot signal. And down here, controller ref dot current dot abort. So now all this is saying is that we can abort the request directly from inside of here. So now if I click load users, you can see after two seconds, I get this message and if I click cancel, you can see it cancels everything out and gives me back this error response. If I want, I can even come in here and I can say if e.name is equal to abort controller, well then I can set my fetch, fetch status to something like canceled or we'll just say canceled, there we go. Otherwise I'll set it to error because this is going to be called anytime I actually cancel it with an abort request, it's going to come into this code. And then I could, you know, just copy this. We'll say if it's canceled, canceled, we'll just render out the text canceled instead. There we go. So now if I click load users, you can see it's waiting. After two seconds, I'll get this message. When I click cancel, you can see that my error is incorrect. And that's because this instead of saying abort controller should say abort error. That was just a typo on my end. So now let's click load user. You can see it's loading. I'm going to get this cancel. And now you can see it says canceled right here. Now, I don't want this video to be an attack on Josh or anything like that. I think his content is really great. I'll actually put a link to his channel on the screen so you can check out some of his other videos. I just saw this recent video and I had to make a response to it because I really didn't like the advice being shown there. And I wanted to show you guys a way to do the exact same thing he's trying to solve, but in a much better way.